So what we want to try to do is we want to try to find we want to find where there's big holes in the market or there's pockets in the market where there's no market profile resistance. Remember, we're not looking for pivot levels. The pivot levels to me are worthless um, because they get run through a lot. We're not looking for Fibonacci levels. We're not looking for levels that are tier two indicator levels. We're looking for levels where all the participants have participated in the market. So what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to find holes in the market where market profile does not exist in the last two, three, four days on these larger two to four hour profiles. It's called gaps in the market. Because what happens if you get above high value or low value area in the market, the market becomes imbalanced. So this morning you can see I have a big gap in the market on the S&P as of right now at 51, 22 and three quarters when and if we break out of that level, I don't have resistance to previous market profile to 5150. So we have almost a 30 point gap in the market to be filled. And what we do is we try to find setups to get into that gap. So let's take a look at a gap that happened this week doing that. So this was a break of high value area. We had no, no that's the condition we're in right now. We're trying to break high value. This happened this week. High value was sitting here. I put it on top of my 12020 chart just to show you how you can get into these levels and project the next level when they're going to, where, where they're going to possibly go to. So high value area was sitting right at 5037 this week. Well, consequently, what we do is we try to look for our zone breakouts to catch these wrongly positioned traders or these counter trend traders to get stopped out into these into these holes in the market or gaps because what happens they will get short up against this level whether it be a fib level or whether it be a pivot level but market profile has told us that that's where the participants are so we know that a lot of counter trend trading exists in the market that's what causes order flow for us we are different we want to try to buy high here and sell higher where the majority of participants try to sell this high and try to buy back low because it's major resistance. So that's where market profile spits these levels out. They spit these levels out based upon all the market participants, all the algorithms, all the hedge funds, prop firms, professional amateur traders. It spits these major levels out. And these levels, what they do is they give us holes in the market like this. Here's this morning's hole. So when we break out at 22 and 3 quarters this morning, I have a potential run where the runner could run to 5150. So I know my target for the day already because I have these previous market profiles marked down and I got my current market profile where I need to break out of. Because if I'm in between high value and low value area here, the green and the red volume profile that's been around since 1994, if I'm in between it, then I know I'm in a balanced market. So what I want to try to do is I want to try to get into an imbalanced market and break through this 22 and three quarters this morning and try to get a zone breakout to fire to get to that 5150, that 30 point potential. So these setups are not in trying to get a, a tick or two ticks or three ticks in the market. We're trying to find holes in the market for these 10, 20, 30 point holes in the market to get a nice runner. And that's what happened this morning. This morning we got a nice buy set up, I'll show you in a second, that has drived us all the way to the high value area. So let's get back to our point then. So this is the hole in the market that happened this week, just like it's happening right now. And if you haven't played our live video, go to daytradingthefutures.com. I took about 15 minutes to go over a setup before it happened. And that setup um, produced over a 10 point run. And I go over exactly how we look for it. That's at daytradingthefutures.com. Go into that and you can play that video. That video will let you know exactly how we look for the, the setups, these zone breakdowns and breakouts, and how you can use a larger time frame going to a smaller time frame. 
So when you go into our website, I would play that video over, go to recent videos, and I would use how to use the automated management software for zone breakouts off the 11010. Right? So this is a really good video because it goes over 15 minutes heads up on how to stock the trade. I was stocking the trade in the room on a Friday, and it lets you know how we stock trades. So that was a really nice video for you to learn how to look for the setup that we're looking for now that is currently going to be uh, it's going to be coming up. I walked through that at about a 15 minute heads up before the 10 point drop. So review that, but here's essentially what you do. You find out where the hole in the market is first with market profile. You can't use a second tier indicator like a stochastic or a divergence or a Fibonacci or, you know, well, whatever it is, uh, that's not all the participants in the market. That's just a indicator or strategy. Uh, hey, hey, Pencat, good morning. That, that's, a, that's just something where it's a lagging indicator that is an oscillator helping you to confirm a trade. But it's not the participants in the market. Market profiles all the, particip all the participants in the market. So I know right now if I'm going to start breaking out here this morning, which we're going to get back to it for traders here in a second, at 22 and 3 quarters, if we break through here and we get the setup to come up with a zone breakout, a yellow breakout zone, our target's going to be up to that 5150. All right? So here's how we're going to play it this morning again. When you break out a high value area, you become into an imbalance market. So this was the high value area this week, just like now it's sitting at right butting its head right up against it. So we'll play it the same way. We'll look for a zone breakout. This automatically turns yellow. Um, it gives an alert on your computer. It turns yellow to let you know you're in a zone breakout. Now the beautiful thing about it is the oscillators work great with this, showing that you're into a stronger position before the breakout happens. So if my oscillator down here is pegged, this happens to be on this time frame, 123.81. If it's pegged at that level on the 12020, then you know that we are looking for a zone breakout into this imbalanced market, which happened. It, it, the bar came out uh, at 3037 and a half. The market profile was 5037 even. Two ticks above the market profile, it fired. It happened to run all the way up to 77. So you can see the kind of move you can get getting into an imbalance market. As a 40 point move on the S&P, right? And less than uh, what, an hour and a half. So you try to find these imbalance gaps. Now your first target is gonna be the first profile you see, second target's the next profile you see using previous market profile. So as, a, as an over 34, 35 point gap filled here and almost a 40 point potential run because of this 20 Renko. Now, on this video that I gave you guys heads up on, and you can play it, because uh, if you go to the five minutes left in the video on 412, I go over the live trade for five, uh, give a 15 minute heads up on it, but go to five minutes in the video that's left and you can see the trade come up. And what I did is I, I established that the 120 was in a hard uptrend like this. So when you're moving hard in an uptrend like this on the 120, you can trade off the smaller 11010 time frame. And I show you on the previous video how to do that, trading off smaller Renko sizes with large Renko push. So if you get a large Renko push like this that's pushing hard and your oscillator is pegged, you're going to have multiple ent entries off this smaller Renko. And you're not going to overtrade because this doesn't come up very often. You won't get, if this oscillator does, doesn't stay pegged at positive 123.81 on the 120 or negative 123.81, then you can't take trades off the 110 because you're not in a stronger position. So you have multiple entries on the upside, and I go over that in the video how they come up. I sent charts out this week, also in last week, how this happens. We'll go over it today also. So what we'll, we'll want to see right now, we'll want to see the same thing this morning. I want to see as breaks, see it's hitting its head, it hit it right almost to the tick, our market profile right here. It stopped right on at uh, what, right at it, at that 20, 
at that 20 level right here, right? Stop right on it. So what we want to see this morning, we'll want to see is break through this market profile level and start getting through this gap. Then what we want to see is we'll want to see, like we're seeing now, we'll want to see us pegged at 123.81. So that's what we're seeing now. <clears throat> so what we're seeing now, we're in, a, we're, we're in a trend change. We're in a stronger market. You can see that we're pegged at 123.81. So I got strong trend to the upside. So now what can I do? I can take this level and take for the breakout going into an imbalanced market. So the breakout level now will be this 125, 41, 51, 25 and three quarters or 25, this high. This is where the yellow bar will come up right there. If we break through that level, if this oscillator stays at 123.81. Now, if this oscillator starts retracing, then this trade is off. See, it just started retracing. So now look at the oscillator. And I go, I go through this on the live video when they stay. Like I said, just play that video on 412. It's really going to help you understand the system. It took me about 15 minutes to wait for the setup. These setups are not lagging. They don't repaint. And they are not where you got to be, you know, right at the computer where it's like, oh, my God, i got to pull the trigger now, now, now. It's fast, fast, fast. This market does not move as fast if you know what you're doing because you're trying to wait for the setup to match up. So you can see the S&P has not set up for a breakout yet because it went from a stronger market into a retracement market right now. You can see market profiles not getting into the gap fill that we need. So for market profile to break out, we're going to have to break this 25 level right here, right? Because you can see my breakout on the 120 now is also 125. So if we're going to buy this breakout this morning, it's got to break this level. And right when it breaks this level, you will see a yellow bar change on your indicator and strategy okay if you want to trade off this smaller Renko size the 110 that's half the Renko size of the 120 over here then this has to be trending this has to be pegged at 123.81 positive or negative 123.81 you see it's not trending down hard now we're just in a retracement because our zones have changed green but it's early in the morning it's only 8 37 in the morning so since our zones have changed green this is going to be our first breakout, looks like, this morning into an imbalanced market. So once I break 51.25, that will get me into an imbalanced area where there's no resistance until 51.50. Because I don't care where, the, where there's Fibonacci levels. I don't care where there's pivot levels that everybody uses. You know, those levels get ran over and over again because it's not market structure. Pivot levels are not market structure. Fibonacci is not market structure. Those are confirmation tools. I love Fibonacci levels, and I, I, I love divergence with trend, but they're worthless against trend. They will get ran over. So you have to find where the market participants are, we, because if the market participants just sold this market off here at 51.25 on our market profile levels, then we know, knowing market structure, that we have a lot of sell orders that came in at that level. So if the sell order and the participants are sitting at 51.25, where are their resting orders going to be for buy stops? Buy stops are going to be up above 51.25 in this area. So what happens is when you see my trades that come off and they run 10, 20, 30 points, like we send a lot of charts out, is that it's because it's getting into an imbalanced area and they keep marking the market up into a big hole in the market. So you can see where the hole is this morning. It's very, very clear. The hole is 51.25. You can see where our breakout levels are. It's very clear 51.25 is our next buy breakout because you can see the horizontal dots going across. And if you, like I said, if you really want to see this uh, happen, uh, we just had one. Um, like I said, I did it about 15 minutes a heads up for a 10-point drop in the market. Uh, I, I walk it through it just like this this morning. We can't keep the video on here 30 minutes in case it takes 20 minutes to set this up. But you see my point. We can come back and do a recap video on uh, these levels. But you can see how I'm setting the trade up. Because we only have three setups in the trade room. We got one that is a failure trade that's against zone trend. The only time I like to look for that trade if I get back inside a profile from being outside of it. So here I was outside a profile this morning at 6 a.m. this morning. And it closed back inside by a body of the candle back inside. 
If you ever see that happen being outside of profile and you get back inside of profile LV or HVA, then you want to look for this failure trade. What a failure trade is, it's a trade that comes up automatically on our system where that's against zone trend. Zone is red. It's telling us that the oscillator is showing strength. And it's telling us that this market is possibly going to come up and give a trend change. And it called it bull before it happened. This morning, the entry 14 and a half, and it got as high as 25. So it ran over 10 S&P points where a lot of traders got caught short. Our system picked it up and said, hey, this is looking for a positive move to the upside because market profile. If you want to be successful with this system, you got to learn market profile. Because the very simple way to do it, if you're in between LV and HVA, you're balanced. If you get outside of it, you're imbalanced. Now, this is not a standard 30-minute market profile like a lot of traders use. That, to me, is worthless. I don't like 30-minute market profiles because it doesn't catch these swings as well because there's too much. Uh, uh, they're looking for micro structure, not macro structure. These market profiles show really good macro structure of the market. I know the macro structure is a breakout of 25. I know my gap is up to 5150, and now I know that I got a possible zone breakout right here coming at 25. Now, see, I'm setting this trade up just like it's set up back here. This was the same way. I was down. I saw a big gap in the market here. Market profile, HVA, big gap from previous market profile. But see, it was down here also. It never broke out yet. So that's how that video, too, that live video we did way before it happened, and you saw the break, it ran 10 points. Same thing here. Ran over 35 points. There's HVA. Stalked it. Broke out into an imbalance market. There's no resistance in an imbalance market. We're not using Tier 1 tier, or Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4 indicators. There's thousands and thousands of indicators out there, right? But they don't show market structure. Market profile shows market structure, and a lot of traders need to understand that. You understand market profile, and you understand trading these breakouts into imbalanced markets. You're going to trade a different way. You're going to trade a different mindset. The mindset is to buy high and sell higher, short low and buy lower. Where the amateurs get caught, they try to short high or sell high and buy low or buy low and sell high. That's why a lot of traders cannot trade the futures or stock markets or et cetera. They're afraid to buy a high, but in actuality, buying a high is where the counter-trend traders are getting caught with their buy stops, and that fuels the market to the upside. And that's why you always get a lot of counter-trend traders get wiped out in the market because they're afraid to buy this high breakout here in the market profile yesterday. They're shorting this Fibonacci level. They're shorting this uh, uh, price pivot level or S1 or S2 or S3. Or there's divergence up here, and then they get taken to the woodshed. Why? Because the, uh, the professional money is taking their buy stops. And the same thing we're going to look for this morning. We're going to look for these counter trend traders that rejected this trade, right? So they got all these sell stops in there. I mean, all these sell orders in there, and their buy stops are just above it, all these algorithms too. And right when you break out of that, swing of 25 into this imbalance market, we should see this market get into an imbalance move. You can see it got rejected on my profile, and that should propel us up to 51.50. Okay, so that's a game plan here this morning. Now, if it doesn't break out of 51.25, it comes down to LVA, break LVA, then my target's going to be previous control point, 51.01.5. Don't make it difficult. Because all you have to do is look at market structure. Market profile tells us the market structure. We can tell where these holes in the markets are, are because we have our current market profile levels that tell us. And then we just look at previous market profile levels here to let us know. And if the previous market profile level is already inside of our profile, then we don't need to use it because it's already profiling this level. So we don't need to profile that forward. All we got to do is profile forward that levels that are outside of the current day's profile. So I can tell where our targets are way before they happen. And I can do it two, three, four hours ahead of time. So when we finally do break out of 5125, I know my possible runner is all the way to 5150. If I do finally break out of 5112 and three quarters, I know my target is 5101 and a half, 
and then 5085. Look at this big hole in the market below there too. So what we try to do then is we try to time the trades and we try to buy the zone breakouts in this imbalance market to get to here or we try to short these imbalance market where all these buy orders are happening here, sell stops will hit, we're trying to go there to there, and then we're trying to go here to here. That gives you a plan for the day. Market profile is a roadmap where this market should go. You can see it's very, very accurate. Um, you know, we, we have tons of trades and videos how accurate this profile is and how accurate these targets are. Sometimes these targets, and we've seen it over and over again, that'll be the session high for the day within a couple ticks, and it happens. You know, sometimes it will come up and go up maybe a point, point and a half above it, and then crash below it. So these targets are very, very, very important magnets in the market, and they let you know where to look for these buy breakouts that we're looking for this morning. So this buy breakout is sitting right here for us, and there's two ways to do it. We can get in the longer Renko size, which is a 120-20, but your stops are going to be larger initially because it's a 20 Renko size. That means there's 20 ticks in between the low and the high of this bar. But you don't have to do that. You can wait till the market gets into a strong market like this big push we had here this week in a window of opportunity, right? And, and you can let it get rolling on the 120 and then just trade entries off the, off the lower Renko size. What do I mean by that? Because if, if I got this... If this is initial entry off the 120, there's going to be multiple entries off this 110 in between here. Multiple, multiple shots at taken with a small stop off of a 110-10 chart that has a 10 tick uh, swing high and swing low in between it. Multiple entries. What I mean by that? Because once the 120 gets into it, I'll show you the window of opportunity. I marked it up when this was happening just to show you. Look at the multiple opportunities you had in this window of opportunity. Here's where the 120 start breaking out. We start breaking out on the 120 at my time of day, 12.50, I say, I say to start watching the market again going into the afternoon. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 entries in between this win of opportunity when the 120 is strong. I don't care about this oscillator below on the 110. This oscillator below just tells me that the market is strong. Goes down, doesn't get below 20. I mean, uh, 100 comes right back above 100. Below 100, above 100. It tells me when this market's strong, strong, oscillator, strong, strong. But what it does, it gives me multiple opportunities. So if you look at it between both of these, if I skinny this down, if you understand this, this is how I did this live video. This is how we got that 10-point runner. Check this out. You understand this, you do very well in the room. There's your window of opportunity. So here's your initial breakout into the high value area. Right? There's no, you had the initial entry off the 120, ran 35 S&P point potential, 40 at, at the swing high. But, but look how strong it is. Look how strong the oscillator is. Now look at the pullbacks you get, the minor pullbacks. Above 100, gets below 100, straight back above 100. Back below, we get these yellow pull-in bars that automatically came up and that's how you can use the 110 in this window of opportunity and the cool thing about doing that is you don't trade a lot because guess what the 120 is not going to be in a pig position all day long it's going to retrace and go back and forth but then it's eventually going to run you're going to know you're in a window of opportunity when this thing starts running right and then you get multiple entries off the 110 